Okay. Okay. Are we good? Oh my god. Just minorly terrified, but not really. Hi, I'm Erin. Uh, Erin Lucy, and welcome to my channel. It's my first video ever, and so I'm going to attempt a newbie tag and... I also wanted to talk about my top 10 favorite books from 2021. The first question is, why did you start this channel? I started this channel because I really love to read, um, which might be a given, but I just want to talk more about books and meet more people who are just as into books as I am. I wanted to also have kind of more of a record of what I'm reading and how I'm feeling about books in the moment. So decided I would try out booktube. <laughs> what are some fun and unique things that you bring to booktube? Yes, I'm another white girl on booktube. Super unique, the most. Yeah, definitely not super unique, I feel like. I, I guess the point of view that I hope to bring is that I am also actually a PhD candidate in biology. So, you know, studying the sciences and I'm hoping I can bring that to some books. I particularly want to read some more nonfiction, so do some vlogs about the science as well. So that's something that I hope I can bring. Next question is what are you most excited for about this channel? I'm just really excited to talk more about books and keep a record of like my reading and also like find a lot of other book recommendations from people so just the general community next question is why do you love reading i really love to you know discover a whole new world and i really love to learn about new things points of view um history science whatever and i just feel like reading is just a really wonderful way to do that what book or series got you into reading this is a tough one and actually goes with one of the other questions, which is when did you start reading? I remember as a kid going to the library and I was one of those kids that would check out like the max number of books that you could. <laughs> as far as like specific books that got me into, I remember reading a lot of like Magic Treehouse, Juni B. Jones, Spiderwick Chronicles, obviously Harry Potter, although J.K. Rowling, Boxcar Children, Nancy Drew, anything like adventure related. Another question was what challenges do you think uh, will be the hardest on booktube? Staying true to myself and continuing to uh, share and read what I like and but also like being part of a community. So I don't know, it's like I guess maybe the whole like pressure around the community, which is in, in any community, I feel like. But I think that always makes me nervous in going to like a new space that already has like a, like a huge community of people. The next question is where do you read? Honestly, anywhere. I usually bring like at least my Kindle or um, my phone has audiobooks on it wherever I go. So yeah, pretty much anywhere. The next one is what kind of books do you like to read? This is a tough one and also maybe something in terms of like a hardship is I don't feel like I'm very like niche one genre type, which seems to be coming more more of a thing. Um, but I would say like almost any genre I will at least like try or have read a couple books from. I've definitely had phases like a dystopian phase. I definitely also had like a thriller phase. Um, I definitely have more recently gotten super into fantasy which is also like a very like popular thing right now, I feel like. So, but overall, and I think you can kind of see that from my top 10 list from last year, I feel like all across the board. <laughs> so a lot of different things. So yeah, those are all the questions that I have written down. Um, hopefully that gives you a bit of an introduction to me and now I wanna go into my favorites from last year. So I kind of did this in like a 1 through 10, but there are a lot of the middle books I feel like are not exactly in order. I will say my first one is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. And that was a super popular one last year, but it's also one that I've been recommending to everyone for the past few months because I loved it. I just thought it was like a really 
um, well-written story about this girl, Addie, who um, is born in the early 1700s in France and is set to get married and kind of has this life all planned out for her. And she realizes she really does not want that. So she basically like begs on her wedding day. She's like, I'll do anything. Please just like, I don't want this life. And she makes a bargain to get out of that life. But the catch is that every time she meets anybody, they will not remember her. Like as soon as they turn around, they won't remember who she is. So she has like, theoretically, like an eternity to like live this like grand life that she wanted to in theory, but nobody remembers her. And so the whole story is just like her journey to deal with this kind of curse bargain that she struck. She's trying to basically like overcome and still leave her mark on the world while also always being forgotten. And then she like a really big part of it is also the story of Henry, who's this boy she meets like pretty early on in the story that does remember her and it's the first person that does. And I really enjoy because it also part of it is told from his point of view and I really loved both of their stories and I think it's definitely worth reading. I actually listened to it and I thought that the audiobook was really well done. Okay, second one is After Dark by Haruki Murakami. It takes place in Tokyo over the course of like a single night and it is about this girl, Mari, and actually her sister as well. Mari is like out on the streets like doing things and experiencing um, life and Ma or, and her sister is um, asleep and it's amazing. It was my first Murakami and I loved it so much. It had this, it has this aspect of like magical realism that I really love. I just feel like he does this genre in such an incredible way. And so yes, I was completely drawn into the world of Murakami. I'm also halfway through 1Q84, which I'm gonna do a vlog on because I love it. I'm pretty sure it's going to be one of my new favorites. So yes. But now I'm Murakami fan girl a little bit. So I apologize if you're not a Murakami fan. So the next one is House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. Another very popular one from last year. And if you haven't heard of it, it's about this man, Linus. So he works for the department in charge of magical youth. And his job is to basically go to these orphanages where these magical youth live because they're kind of cast out from society. And he goes and checks on these orphanages and makes sure everything is running okay. And he's sent on this one assignment to this particular orphanage that's supposed to be really difficult. Um, one of the, the children living there is supposed to be like the Antichrist. And so it's all about his experience going to this island, meeting this, these children, meeting Arthur who runs the orphanage there. It is such a heartwarming and beautiful story. I love the children, Lucy, Chauncey. I just think at the end of it, it was just like so, so heartwarming. It just like made my heart melt. Very cute. So that was another one. Actually, the next one on my list is also by TJ Klune. So once I read that, I was like, oh, I definitely have to read Under the Whispering Door, which was his next book that came out actually just last fall. And very similar vibes. So if you're looking for like just like a really heartwarming story to just like escape into and just like lift you up, make you feel better. Um, both of these did that for me very well. And Under the Whispering Door is about Wallace who is also a man who's like kind of just straight up a terrible person and he's just like this office guy working away not really caring about anyone else and he dies right away in like the first chapter so a reaper comes to get him and takes him to this the ferryman hugo and the ferryman's job is to help souls move on um, from the human world into the next and so this whole thing is about Wallace coming to terms with himself his behavior like who he wanted to be as a person and it was just really beautiful and it sounds sad because it is kind of about death but it was also just surprisingly also very heartwarming same feels as the house in the cerulean sea so highly recommend that one as well the next one is probably 
like I said, there's a lot of really popular ones on here, but this one is probably the most. And that is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. And yep, super popular. I finally read the entire A Court of Thorns and Roses series last year. Loved it. Like many people, the first was not vibing. The second, so good. I thought that it was a really compelling fantasy, a series that just made me want to keep reading. Perfect escapism. My second favorite was surprisingly um, A Court of Silver Flames, which is kind of controversial, I think. A lot of people didn't end up loving it. It's not super strong in certain parts of the plot, but the reason I loved it so much is I just thought the portrayal of like Nest as a character and as like trauma in these fantasy worlds was like a lot more realistic than a lot of other ones I've read. Like there's a lot of trauma there and a lot of um, hardship that's like not really directly addressed. And so I feel like A Court of Silver Flames did that in a way that I hadn't really seen a lot of other books do. So yes, possibly somewhat unpopular opinion, but loved it. <laughs> the next one, which kind of goes to show just like the jump in genres before the coffee gets cold. And basically the whole thing takes place in this coffee shop in Tokyo. It's a coffee shop where you can go and travel in time. However, there's a lot of rules with the whole traveling in time thing. So it's not as like romantic as people think it would be. Um, this book highlights four different people who utilize it and their relationships with other people. And that's kind of really, I think, what the book is about and what it highlights is uh, relationships between people and how they can change and how you can have an impact on other people. So, before the coffee gets cold, another favorite. All right, the next one is The Water Dancer by Ta-Nehisi Coates and this one is really sad, I would say. It was kind of hard to get through. Uh, it is about this man who is a slave in Virginia and his um, fight to freedom and his relationships with other people, especially his mother, whom she, he doesn't have a lot of memories of, but he has kind of this like gift from her. So there's this aspect of magical realism, which again is I think another reason I really liked it. But it was also just heart, both heartbreaking and also beautiful, uh, very well written and definitely one that I would recommend. The next one is 84 Charing Cross Road. It's actually these letters from Helene who lives in New York um, and letters she writes to a bookshop in London asking for certain texts and I think it's just it's definitely a book lover's book one of those like kind of books about books and it's also about her relationship with this bookshop and the people that work there yeah how like these surprising relationships that develop just through writing letters so yeah really short but a fun read okay two more the first is how to be an anti-racist by Abram X Kendi which is another nonfiction. And it is about how to be an anti-racist. And I thought it did a really good job for me in bringing both the history and how to exist in our current world as an anti-racist and like not be complacent or a bystander in situations. So yes, how to be an anti-racist. Uh, the last one is The Memory Police by Yoko Agawa and I wasn't gonna include this in like a favorites from last year and realize that I have been thinking about this book since I read it. Just like every now and then it just comes back into my head because I think it was just so interesting and unexpected. It's about this girl living on this island where things disappear and things just don't just appear, like the whole concept of the thing disappears. There are these memory police that um, enforce this so go around and like we'll destroy everything related to birds like right after birds have been deleted from memory and there's also these people who do remember and of course like the memory police are looking for them and so it's all about dealing with a world where things are disappearing and then the other part that I actually liked a lot too is the the main character is a 
writer and she's writing this novel and throughout the book you get like all these snippets of her novel like I keep thinking about it so yeah the memory police it's another great one so yeah thank you for watching those are my top 10 books from 2021 I'm really excited to go on this booktube journey have a couple more video plan videos planned that I'm really excited about and I'm gonna be uploading every Wednesday at five so yeah, looking forward to it.